DIE family, you are here at the Desires Energy Podcast, where our goal is to inspire action and everybody you know that got big desires in life. I got my boy right here. He's going to introduce himself to the people, and we're going to ask him some questions to see how we can help encourage action in you. It's your boy Cody Blake, the phenom straight out of Southwest A-Leaf, Texas. You already know what it is, loud music. We in the building, for sure. How did you get involved with loud music? Because I know it's for independent artists. It's a real great platform. Shout out to them. Shout out to Derek. If y'all definitely want to tap in, just go to their Instagram, official loud or loud music uh, with a K, not a C. But anyways, tell us, brother, how did you get involved with loud music? Man, uh, shout out to my boy, Bliss. I always tell this story, man. Bliss, he actually discovered me off of a website, I think like Reverb Nation, a long time ago. And he gave me an opportunity. He's like, hey, we looking for artists to showcase and I felt like that was my opportunity to kind of sort of like, you know, just give them a little bit more than just a showcase or an idea for a showcase, like a, you know, like some of my music. So I gave them a whole folder of my music. They're like, yeah, can we sit down with you, bro, and talk to you? Because you, you got something. You got something special. And then, yeah, we sat down. I went to a rehearsal studio. Um, and that's where I kind of sort of introduced myself and got acquainted with them and Man, the rest is history, dog. That's my team right there. Shout out to everybody. Derek McKinney, CEO, my boy Bradley, my manager. Yeah, the whole team. My Oshi, the whole nine, bro. They all treated me like family since. You was already prepared for that situation. Let's yeah, just rewind time. Take me back to the beginning. How did you get involved in music to begin with? Bro, I've been doing music since I was a kid. Like, it started just by singing in the car with my mom when I was younger and my grandmother, too. Uh, and then it translated, like, through practice in sports. I was singing while I practiced. Uh, I ended up going to be in band in my high school, you know what I'm saying? So music's just been a part of my life collectively. And in high school, that's actually where I got started with the music. You know, that's where I would just get my ideas by banging off the table, you know, making beats, even writing some of my own songs, you know, the other songs type deal, you know, doing covers and things like that. That's where it translated. Ooh, so I've always been curious when it comes to writing covers. Uh, you remember back in like the the oh five to oh nine era when Wayne was doing like remixes to every song that came out. Has was that kind of like what you was on in high school? Yeah, yeah, pretty much, pretty much. That's kind of what it was. Like we would just have fun and just create. It would be freestyle or like sometimes I would even like do some of my writing, like you know for. English and things like that like sometimes we'll have creative writer, uh, writing assignments so I would do those but yeah it pretty much stemmed from that like we would just be on some Lil Wayne type go in have fun make freestyle on the beat just just do what we do make sure y'all like comment and subscribe on this video because uh, a lot of people that we're interviewing these are people that are up and coming that you're gonna be seeing their faces and names a whole lot on your TV screens and in your cell phone so while you catching them early, make sure y'all, you know, support them, support their platform, but also so that we can continue to make this type of content. Like, share this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all of that good stuff. But going back into it, so with you, what is one of the biggest obstacles so far that you've faced over these past few years when it comes to being an independent artist? I actually said this the other day. Shout out Amir Diamond. We talked about this. Overthinking. You know, like today, in today's society, like we're very, very picky. We're very picky people. You know what I'm saying? There's certain things we like, certain things we don't like. And sometimes that kind of sort of overwhelms a creative artist. You don't know what to do, think, or say sometimes. But I think the key to all of it is just by remaining genuine and remaining true to who you are. You know what I'm saying? If you continuously do what you know how to do, Stay consistent, keep grinding, keep going hard. Like you never, you never gonna fail. You're not gonna, you're not gonna fall. You gonna always win and succeed. There might be obstacles, mm -hmm. but you can get past those obstacles just by using, using what you know. You know what I'm saying? So, that 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 would be a, a obstacle or maybe something like that that would be blocking me. But to beat that, like I just, you know, take my time, take a deep breath, and going with a clear head, knowing that hey, bro, they gonna get the best of me regardless, and that's it. I feel you on that because I've never had much of an issue overthinking, but I can see how much anxiety can come from that. Yeah. Like when you overanalyze a situation and you're afraid to take action. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing with this uh, whole purpose of this podcast is to inform, inspire and encourage people yeah. to start taking action. Because that's one of the toughest things to do. And the more directions that you think about different things you could do, 
you end up not taking any any important or impactful steps in the right direction because you're taking one step left, one step right, one step forward, one step back. Take one of the steps, one of the ideas you have, and run with it for a while yeah. before you start pivoting and all yeah. of that. You got to run with it. You got to take your time. Run with the idea and do everything possible to push that idea to its limits. Past the limits beyond your, even, your own imagination could think of. Like, same, that's how I do my music. You know what I'm saying? Like, everything that I put into my music, it, it, it involves me. It involves an experience. It involves something that I can relate to. You know what I'm saying? So I'm able to push forth that idea, share it with the world, and keep it going for all the people that gravitate towards it. Cool. They don't. It's all good. I don't have to think about it too much no more. Like, once you start worrying about you and doing for you, it makes everything a lot more easier for you in the long run. It's that mental clarity that you get from just staying focused. And it's hard to be focused when you're trying to do too much, especially mentally. And that's something that we're learning as well is that an hour of real focus goes a lot further than days of just doing a little bit of everything, you know? Facts, facts, facts. But you know, it's all good. Like I said, at the end of the day, my music shows for it. Like, I'm able to come out and have fun, jump on any stage, portray all the emotions, and people rock with it. Shoot, people have given me praise for being able to just step out and not only speak my truth, but have fun in my truth. People, co people congratulate me for it. People say thank you for it. I, shoot, that's all I wanted to do in life. That's all I want to keep doing, and that's what I'm going to keep doing. So, so the next projects, the next projects that are going to be coming out and everything, it's going to be dope. It's going to be something for everybody. Speaking of that, man, what are some of the... I'm still going to stick with the past for right now before we get into the future. So what are some of the venues that you've already performed at? Some of the stages you performed on? Bro, like Summer Jam, that was epic. Being able to be on stage with Grace, people like Ken the Man, people like Beat King, you know what I'm saying? Even with my own team, shout out to the Loud Music team. The whole Loud team was there. You know, so Summer Jam, we perform at Loud Fest as well. That's an event that we put on. Uh, man, I performed Warehouse Live. Uh, I performed at the House of Blues as well. Pretty, some amazing, great stages, man. And I'm, it's a blessing to be able to grace those stages. So tell me what it's like to perform on those stages, especially the ones where, you know, it's, you look out into the crowd and you see hundreds of people or thousands of people, you know, depending on the venue. Tell me about... What is that like from an internal mindset? Like, what are you thinking? Like, are you nervous? Are you, like, what are you feeling in those moments that very few people ever even get the opportunity to experience? Yeah, I got you. Yeah, so I feel not nervous, but it's like excitement. Like, I'm just excited to be here and jump on stage and perform for you guys. You know, perform for the people. Give the crowd something entertaining. You know, and that energy propels it into my set. Like, I shut down every set that I do simply because I'm on 10 with the energy and I'm having a whole lot of fun with the people that are supporting me. And, you know, it's, it's, for me, it's the best feeling in the world. I don't know everybody else, especially at Summer Jam stage. That was, like, one of my most favorite, like, my favorite stage simply because of the fact that uh, that stage was huge. Being able to walk that long ramp, bro, that's something, bro, that is something that I wouldn't trade for anything else in the world. Facts. Like I said, we living vicariously through him, man, because like I said, I went to Summer Jam. I saw the crowd. I saw the stage. It was it was definitely a good turnout. And like I said, very few artists are graced with that opportunity, especially then. Not only did he get the opportunity, but once he got up there, he was prepared. So I want to go for preparation. So how do you prepare? Because this podcast, we don't only want to talk about people's stories, but we also want to give people practical advice on what they can do, up-and-coming artists, things that they can take from you in order to learn on how to get prepared for shows and things like that. So how do you prepare for, let's say if you have a performance, let's give you two weeks. How do you start preparing for that performance? Oh, man, rehearsal, 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 and more rehearsal, and then rehearsal after that. <laughs> nah man no for real it's rehearsal it, that's what it all comes down to you gotta be able to go and perfect your craft 
It's all about perfecting your craft. You can't just hop on stage. Shout out my Oshie. She was just saying this. You can't just hop on stage after you just got fresh out of your first and only rehearsal that you ever had. No, it's a process. Like, you got to you gotta be willing to take days out the week. You know, sometimes, even if you're working part-time, too. Like, shoot, there's been plenty of times where I had to work part-time and still work part-time, whatever, and then go out right afterwards, hit rehearsal. You know what I'm saying? Like, we doing something in the in the office, in the studio, all right, and then we about to go in and hit this rehearsal right over here, you know, at Rock House, whatever. You got to put the hours in, you know, and then after you put the hours in, you know, you then sit with your team and have them look at the look at the footage as well. It's just like going through it if you're playing sports. You know what I'm saying? You got all the footage from the last game in the locker room, y'all going over it, hey, we need to perfect this, we need to get that, we need to figure this out, we need to get the cues straight. So no substitute for practice. That's basically what you're telling me. Practice, practice, make a. Hey, practice makes consistency. Makes habits consistency. Yeah. Practice brings consistency. It, cause let's be honest, like it, every show that we see, they talk about it. Other artists talk about it. Like man, that show I actually did this. You would never know they messed up. Exactly. They just kept going. But they're just so consistent with how they do their shows. You would have never known. You would have never known that slip that Usher did on skates, that, that was all planned. <laughs> as far as the crowd know, it was planned. As far as the crowd know, it was planned. But, hey, they were just as into it as, as he was into it. And that's what creates the moments. Because then you go back and see, hey, he almost slipped, but he kept it together right there. Let me uh, go into this because you kind of already mentioned it just a little bit. So when it comes to confidence... As an artist, the amount of practice and rehearsal that you do for something is what breeds the confidence once you're on stage. So would you agree with that? I can agree with that. I think I think it comes within, too. Like, a lot of that has to come from within yourself. Like, you also got to be confident in what you're doing out there, you know, on stage and everything like that. If, you, if you're confident well around, you get the rehearsal and you take the steps necessary, you... You know, you got a team with you, especially if you got a team with you. Y'all communicating, holding each other accountable. Bro... The show going to sell itself. You gonna, all the work is going to sell itself. So, yeah, I believe that confidence comes from that practice, too. But it, a, a lot of it does come from yourself, too. You got to continue to assert your confidence, assert your, dom, assert your dominance, and, you know, be who you set out to be. Our store called Where My Kicks is actually down the street here in First Colony Mall. If y'all go all the way to the other end of the mall, right where in front of Dillard's. It's right by JD's and Dillard's. There's a store called WMK. Y'all go support them. Shout out to their shoes. They're hot, one of the hottest resellers in the city. Black owned business. He has one here in First Colony. He has another out in Willowbrook Mall. So make sure y'all tap in with them. And then we finna get right back into it. We mentioned consistency. We mentioned practice. And then you mentioned about the confidence has to come from within. So what I think one of the, you know, some of the young artists watching want to know is if we go even further before, before you even get to perform on stage, before you have your stuff ready, how do you go about creating? Because some people don't even know the first step. Kind of like rap. I really love it. I enjoy consuming it. But when it comes to creating, it's like I don't know how to get the idea to get the inspiration to even start. What advice would you give to someone that's trying to start off in the creative space itself? I would tell them to go off of what you feel. I mean, and that's just speaking from experience. I will go off of what you feel. Whatever is in that moment when a beat cuts on, you know, however you're feeling in that moment, when you put your creative juices down, that microphone's on, bro, go with that. And then build off of that. It, it might come out, you might get a good run in you. You know what I'm saying? You might get a good eight bars. You might get a full 16 just by having fun and just going off of exactly what you hear or feel right when the beat comes on. Versus trying to, you know, write to it collectively off rip, which is still the same thing. Like, if you're hearing the beat and you're a writer, and same thing, I'm writing for the whole first however long up until the point where I got to stop and make sure I speed up and get all my ideas down. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would do something like that. Go off of the initial moment, the initial feel, and then keep that feeling going for as long as you can. You know what I'm saying? If you got to add backups, do, you, do that. Because, I mean, I know the engineer lingo, too. I do engineering as well. So if you got to add your backups, add your ad libs, bring life to it, the whole nine. Put all your creativity on that page. And then... You'll have a finished product before you know it. 
you wouldn't even you wouldn't have even thought about it. Sometimes it don't come with thinking. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it just comes off the dome. Sometimes it's written down. But whichever moment that you feel in that moment, capitalize. Sometimes it doesn't come with thinking. Sometimes it's just a feeling. Now that's real. That's kind of like with us. We the same way. Where it's like a lot of, a lot of the designs I come up with is actually from just being sleep at night, and you'll just wake up from a dream, and it's almost like an idea would have crossed your mind in your dream, like a vision almost, and then you'll take that. And now I'm seeing the importance of writing things down. Make sure because same way with I guess all creativity can come to you at the spur of a moment. But if you don't capture that moment, whether it's through a text, writing it down, video, picture. Yeah, then eventually that idea will leave you. So that's a big note for that creativity. Sometimes it comes natural. You get a feeling, but make sure you're ready to write it down or whatever you get inspired to think about. Make sure you put it on paper or something that you can go back to later on so that way you don't lose it because some of the greatest ideas have been lost because nobody or the person didn't think to write it down and you know something they can read over and over to make it a reality yeah no exactly i mean even when it comes to like seminars and sitting down in like things like the press junket you know what i'm saying so like even there like when we were in the seminars i had my timer running like i had my recorder running so i go back listen to the conversations figure out how to maneuver in certain areas of my life because I'm taking the knowledge from what I learned and that's just and that's just on the business aspect yeah. but and we can get to that later but like for a creative aspect it's the same way you put a you put the recorder on or you turn on the microphone or if your brain going or your fingers clicking however you do it just just get it out and then hold on and either hold on to it or gravitate tell somebody that can help make it happen make the vision possible whatever you need like it is, it's, it's a shoeing. <laughs> now that we've spoken about the past, I'm actually curious to talk about your present or your very, very near present, yes, near sir. future, right? Yes, sir. So tell us, man, it's, it's something that's coming up very soon, and I want you to tell the people about it. So we are definitely jumping on stage with Soldier Boy. Soldier Boy tell him coming up out of Fort Worth, Texas, man. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited, bro. That's all I can say. How did you even manage to do this, man? Because this is, this is big. This is not some small, oh, yeah, you know, he performing at the local lounge. Like, no, this dude is, uh, he's performing on a stage, the same stage as Soldier Boy. Yeah. And this is like, again, this is something that people work years to get to. So tell me, how did, how did this even come about? Like, what was the situation? Who hit who up? Like, how did you even get to this uh, opportunity? Listen, all glory to the Most High and shout out to my team, Loud Music. They're the ones that help make this possible. I have a great team with me who knows how to maneuver, talk to, man to other managers, talk to promoters, talk to people who are willing to, you know, give a young gun a shot, you know what I'm saying, to go out and have fun and do exactly what the big leads do. So, you you know what I'm saying, I have to give and pay homage to my team 110% for this opportunity, man, because, you know, like I said, without them, it wouldn't even be possible. And I can't wait. Like I said, I'm ready to bring the energy and just have fun, man. That's what it's all about for me. And give the people something that, you know, they can rock with and they can, you know, get behind. You feel me? Hey, so speaking of that, what date can we expect this though? Cause this is going, this is probably gonna be the first clip that I show on social. It's coming up real soon. So what, what date can people expect to uh, see you performing? If I'm not mistaken, this is September 16th. September 16th, yes sir. It's coming up, man. Literally, we in July right now. It's in August, September. It's two months away. So, I, I I'm ready. <laughs> That's all I gotta say is I'm ready, man. And then you also mentioned off camera. <clears throat> you mentioned off camera about how this is going to be you touring as well. Oh, so yeah. it's not going to be just one performance. That's it. It's going to be like you guys possibly might be touring, right? We might definitely have more shows on the way. Like we're getting all of those lined up. I have more shows coming up in the coming dates. So, yeah, that, that kind of sort of lines it up as such, man. It's going to be great. I, I can't wait to see the next dates coming up for me or what we have in store. But I know for sure that the Soldier Boy show is going to be epic. And I can't wait to shut it down. Wait to shut it down. Make sure y'all come support him. Support him on social media, too. So 
y'all already know where to follow us at Desire Is Energy. To get to this to this podcast on YouTube, Desire Is Energy. Type it in on the search bar. We come up. Like I said, you guys already know where to follow us. Desire Is Energy website, desiresenergy.com. And my fit, I think I think I should do something for the people. A uh, little game. If you're watching this far into the video, I want you to comment below. I want you to first wait, wait first list some of your songs real quick, cause I want them. I want you to list uh, like three of your songs, and I want if people watching this video, I want them to comment below a lyric or a verse from one of those songs. Yeah. And if they do that, the first three people that do that, they'll actually get them a free shirt, oh, yeah. a free Thunder T. So name the three. Name three of your songs real quick. So let's do Penthouse. Sneaky Link, and my newest one that I just released, Rounds. Round. Those three, yeah, Rounds. Y'all got to make sure y'all check out Rounds for sure. Okay, and where can they go to hear, hear those three songs? Oh, it's on all streaming platforms. Wherever you get your music, is going to be there. Just look up Cody Blake, K-H-O-D-Y, Blake, B-L-A-K-E, and search for any of the songs. Sneaky Link is going to be with the Art of Ratchet. That's Fat Pimp and Tim Ned. Penthouse is off of the Cody Blake show. And then Rounds, like I said, we just released it. So y'all can check it out as, on, as a single on all the streaming platforms. All right, and just to repeat for you guys again, he says Sneaky Link, mm -hmm. Penthouse, yes, sir. and Rounds. And Rounds. All right, let's get it. Those three songs. Now again, y'all go. It could be any one of those three. Listen to the lyrics. If you put, if you comment a verse on this video, cause we gonna post it on multiple platforms. We gonna post this on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, obviously YouTube. So if you can comment in the comments one of his verses from one of those three songs, the first three people that do that, this ain't for everybody. So you gotta hurry. The first three people that can do that, I'm gonna make sure that y'all get y'all a free T-shirt. All right, and it could be a Thunder T. It could be any design y'all want. We'll make sure we get it to y'all. And make sure y'all tap in with it. And then where can they follow you for Instagram and all of that? Man, y'all can follow me on all social media platforms at Cody Blake Music. That's K H O D Y Blake Music. Man, we got a new one too. What's this new one called? Threads. Yeah, Threads. Y'all oh, make sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You talking about for Instagram? Uh -huh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we we about to dabble in that too. I just yeah. saw that. Yesterday. Yeah, I'm on Threads now too. It's still the same. I mean, as y'all know, y'all can just transfer it over now if y'all ain't if y'all ain't seen it yet. But yeah, if y'all don't follow me on Threads, y'all seeing this, y'all like, what the heck is a Thread? It's Instagram just launched it. Y'all follow me on Threads, man. I'm gonna be on there cutting up and having fun with y'all. So yeah, it's gonna be live. Man, we got to get tapped in with Threads too, man. We just saw it, so we definitely gonna be on there as well, uh, spitting that, spitting that trash, and getting y'all to come spin that cash. Let's get it. All right, this has been another episode, and before we close out, we got to remind y'all one more time: make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure y'all follow us on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, every platform you possibly can, so y'all continue to see us do what we do, interviewing these up and coming pop stars hip-hop stars and just successful uh people in general you know so make sure y'all tap in and make sure y'all peace out and support him and his music and come to his next show especially with soldier boy make sure you go to that to support for real come to the show with soldier boy out in fort worth texas it's gonna be live it's gonna be lit it's gonna be on september 16th you already know what to do don't miss it straight up peace out